Hi everybody, this is Kevin, and welcome back to another video, and today I would like to share my thoughts on Fairy Tale 100 Years Quest Episode 17, which I thought was another excellent episode. So many great things happened here. We had another one of the bonus chapters adapted, as you can see. Brandish makes her return. I mentioned last week that it was going to be a Lucy-centered episode, and yes, Lucy has a great moment at the very start of the episode. However, I would say it's more of a Grey and Juvia-centered episode, so Grey and Juvia fans rise up. There's also another returning character, and at the end of the video, I have an update for a new English voice cast member uh, who debuted in episode 15, so you can connect the dots there. But overall, you guys already know, I love fairy tales so much, so of course I have many screenshots, as well as manga panels to compare and contrast. And I have to say, this episode was as close as you can get to the manga, if not even better, and just fantastic. So let's start right away with one of the bonus chapters. I think this was either from the end of volume 7 in the manga, or maybe volume 8. But this is to tie in Brandish to the story, because... You know, people who are only watching the anime probably thought, oh, she had the one cameo appearance helping Lucy and Grey, and that's it for Brandish. But no, she has an important role in 100 Years Quest. You can see her prominently in the second opening, and they do the bonus chapter adaptation here to show that Brandish is in Drazel. And <laughs> a really cute scene where she's touring the city. She has this giant ice cream cone. How many are there? It looks like she has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven scoops of ice cream. And you see there are some characters in the background looking at her. You can imagine they're looking at her for a number of reasons. Number one, the giant ice cream cone with seven scoops of ice cream. But number two, have you ever seen Brandish's outfit and her giant brandishes, if you will? But anyway, let's compare that to the manga. You see there's more background characters. She's touring Drazel. Um, I have to say, and she looks cute in the manga, of course, but I think she looks even more beautiful in the anime. Just, just my opinion. What do you guys think? But she continues touring Drazel, ends up going on the Fluffy Wuffy Roller Coaster. Look at her face. Look how cute she is there. Having the time of her life. There it is in the manga. They call it the Fluffy Coaster in the manga, but with the subtitles in the anime and with the English dub in the original series, Brandish called it Fluffy Wuffy because she loved petting Happy. And if you remember in the original series, she used her magic to make Happy a giant. And she's like, oh, so Fluffy Wuffy. And, you know, you gotta love Brandish. So there she is making her derpy faces, of course. She's having the Alderaan Parfait and is like, oh, this is delicious. It's so good. And then she makes this confused face because she's actually in Drazel at the same time as our heroes. That's why they adapted this bonus chapter at the start of this episode to introduce Brandish back into the story. And she realizes all the townspeople disappeared. The one who served her, the Alderaan Parfait, disappeared. And she's like, you know, where's my, my other Alderaan Parfait that I ordered? And everyone's gone. You see the destruction of the city behind her. And she has to join the fray later on in this episode. So there's Brandish. Uh, here's another, I guess like this whole page here where it shows her making the derpy faces. I'll, I'll zoom in a little more. Like, you know, <laughs> she, she makes the cute faces. That's when she has a bite of it. Uh, there's the earthquake. Oh, well, <laughs> let's not bother. So, so cute. I love Brandish. She's definitely one of my favorites. But the actual episode starts here with a bit of recap to what's going on. Our heroes, of course, are all separated. There's the different god seeds, which last week you had the weaker characters of Fairy Tale, led by Max, defeating the god seed Doom, thanks to Wendy's enchantment magic. You have Loxus, Jalal, and Urza up against Gears. You had Natsu confronting Alderaan himself. And then Lucy's group with Metro. So it's just doing a bit of recap, showing where everyone is. And then right away, it cuts to Lucy using her new ability, Stardress Mix, to combine Aquarius and Scorpio into a brand new star dress. And we have it right there. I love it, Dan. She has the Aquarius bathing suit on, almost like a mech suit with Scorpio's powers, the tail and everything. And Lucy's Lucy's, god damn. <laughs> I love the detail here, especially with the under boob. Look at that, man. Oh yeah. And uh, there she is, just another shot of that for research purposes, of course. There it is right there. They didn't do a full-on magical girl transformation like they did with the 
Leo and Virgo star dress a few episodes ago. But I think that's because that star dress is supposed to be more cute and she's more like a magical girl. You see in the panel there, it just, it's kind of like Urza's re-quipping, but it goes really quick and, you know, the music that played during this transformation was great. It's, you know, about as close as you can get right there, right? Although, maybe it's just the angle. No, she has the twin tails there as well. It's just sort of the way they, they drew her in the anime. It looks a little different. But looks great nonetheless. You already know, Lucy's my number one girl. I love her. This is taken straight out of the manga. Just that whole angle and everything where you get the side boob and the ass shot. My goodness. Check it out right there. Aqua Stream. That's Look at that. That's as, as good as you can get. An adaptation from the manga to the anime. You love to see it. Some more Lucy boob, of course. She does one attack, and, and that's really it. So, I thought this would be more of a Lucy-focused episode. I, I didn't know that we were going to get Grey and Juvia later on, but I wasn't sure how much they were going to expand Lucy's fight. But she just does her transformation, does one attack, and then is, is uh, reverting back to normal, where... Oh my god, <laughs> Lucy's ass is up in the air. And this reminded me of the other day when old Joe, you know, our, our fearless leader, Joe Biden, he was at some event in his hometown of Scranton, man. And I don't even know what he was talking about. He was ranting, telling one of his dementia stories. And somehow he started talking about how he wanted to slap Republicans in the ass. And he, he said something like, those are the kind of guys I don't want to slap in the ass. And he made this weird face. It's like, what the hell's going on with this guy? Dementia Joe, old Joe. But I'm serious. These are the kind of guys you like to smack in the ass. You like to smack in the ass. But the, the point of the story, the weave, if you will, is because he said that on Saturday, and then I watched this episode on Sunday, and as soon as I saw Lucy's ass up in the air like that, I, I felt like Joe Biden. I'd love to slap her in the ass. But, uh... <laughs> Here it is in the manga, which we didn't get the uh, the Stardust Mix ass shot. We got that ass shot, which look at that thing. That thing is huge. <laughs> and just for reference, what a, what a small panel, and you know they adapted it so well. Just a little ass shot. They they uh, they know what we want. <laughs> but anyway, it cuts to the the heart and soul of the episode here with Juvia and Gray teaming up to face off against Metro, where. You know, he starts barreling away, and then Juvia turns into water using her water magic, of course. However, Metro consumes Juvia because she's a liquid, so he's, you know, he's, he's wood, he's, he's a tree, he's, you know, basically eating Juvia in a certain sense. And Juvia has this line right here, is this considered an NTR? <laughs> Which in the manga, here it is in the manga, Oh, Juvia's being absorbed by another, while Grey-sama can only watch. Could this be some kind of cuckoldry? <laughs> like, cuckoldry? They didn't say that in, in the in the anime. I mean, this NTR is close enough, I guess. And if you don't know what any of this stuff means, well, you shouldn't be watching this video to begin with. But I'm just, I'm wondering what they're going to say in the dub version of this. <laughs> because to me, it sounds better her saying cuckoldry, but okay. Uh, so yeah, Metro is basically taking her magical energy. He planted his roots into her, and he's, you know, gaining her magical energy. So there it is in the manga, of course. Grace pissed, that's his waifu, so he starts using his ice make magic. The animation in the, in the sequence, too, when Gray's attacking, he's dodging Metro's attacks. It was so well done. Honestly, like, I keep going back to the Urza Loxus fight, because the Urza Loxus fight was really hyped up. And it was so well done in the manga, but I feel like they dropped the ball. They didn't have enough resources for that fight. And even the fight we got last week with the, the weaker characters of Fairy Tale led by Max, this fight with Grey, of course, Natsu vs. Merkphobia early on, they were all animated better than Urza vs. Loxus. But, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> Juvia. Oh my god, I love her. So Gray is saying that he, he's going to use Juvia, and Juvia says, I welcome any type of play, whatever you're into, Gray. <laughs> and he basically is going to use his ice magic to, you know, freeze her. And she's getting all excited. <laughs> and makes all the Juvia faces. She, she says like, Juvie! <laughs> Whenever she gets excited for Gray. And she starts steaming. <laughs> and it's uh, overheating Metro. So, goddamn, she's just, she's just having the time of her life. And with that, Gray's able to freeze Juvia. Juvia's become, <laughs> become ice. Gray Sama's ice. And he turns her into <laughs> the Juvia hammer. <laughs> Which, there she is in the box. I love it. Does she have it? Yeah. 
No, you can't. Yeah, she has her little hair right there. You can see right there. Um, in the manga, you can see it a little more clearly. But <laughs> there's Juvia's face in the ice hammer. <laughs> oh, what a sweet, sweet little girl. And she's uh, smiling because she was working hand in hand with Gray Sama. They do a unison raid, which this reminded me of the Grand Magic Games. And that was a funny moment. They defeated, was it Cheria and Leon? And then after that, they were still holding hands. And Gray's like, when are you going to let go of my hand? And then Juvia said, I'm going to hold on to your hand forever. <laughs> and Gray's like, you're a weirdo. Leave me alone. Something along those lines. I forget exactly how it went, but I'll always remember that scene. I love Gray and Juvia. You know, you guys already know. Lucy's my favorite, but I think as far as relationships go... Gray and Juvia is a way better relationship than Natsu and Lucy. Just because, remember, Juvia started out as a villain in the very beginning of the series, and Gray defeated her and sort of opened up her eyes to seeing what the world was like, and Juvia fell in love with him, and it's just a really sweet story. I love it so much. They are holding hands again. Oh, it's so sweet. There it is in the manga. Very well done. I mean, again, it's about as close as you can get. So then after the fight was over, Gray said something to Juvia like, Are you injured anywhere? Do you need any medical attention? What's going on? And then Juvia perks up her lips and is like, I'm injured right here, Gray Saba. If you could just give me a little kiss, I'll feel better. And <laughs> this reminded me of Bleach. You see how her, her lips are like a three? There, there was a scene in Bleach during the Fulbring arc, which is the best arc of Bleach, by the way, when Urahime was fawning over Ichigo and <laughs> her eyes turned into like that that same little symbol and Ichigo said to Orihime like what your eyes look like threes <laughs> and Orihime was just joking up it's such a funny moment in bleach <laughs> but <laughs> here it is it hurts a little bit could you try CPR oh come on gray use some CPR on her will you so after this you know he starts blushing and then he he holds Juvia tight, gives her a head pat, and is like, you know, you're you're my Juvia. I'm just happy you're okay. Which earlier in the episode, God, why did I glance over this? But when the fight began, you know, Metro had consumed Juvia, and he's like, foolish human, what is this girl to you? And then Gray said something, she's my strength to live. And Juvia got all, that's when she got all excited earlier. But there it is, I'm just glad you're safe. And, oh, uh, Gray is playing the Sundere right there, looking away after he says that. Juvia's like, yes, he's mine, finally, my Gray-sama. So, excellent, excellent moment with Gray and Juvia. I love their character development, especially in 100 Years Quest. Hopefully, when the series finally gets wrapped up, the two of them will be married, as well as Natsu and Lucy. But Juvia deserves it the most, I think. So after that, <laughs> there's Brandish still having her Alderaan Parfait up there. As the whole city's in ruins, she's just chilling. And after that, she observes them and is like, Hey, how you guys doing? What's up? Long time no see. <laughs> and, and Lucy and Kana, what are you doing here, Brandish? So Brandish is offering to help. This is a, a video. I have to make this into a gift. But it's just her eating her Alderaan Parfait. Just the... Oh, it's not looping. But <laughs> it's just a cute little thing. Like, okay, let me have some more of my chocolate. So that's their shock. They're like, Brandish, what are you doing here? <laughs> so the reason I have Gajil here is because they're talking about how all the other god seeds are being defeated. At this point, there's just Gears and then the main Alderaan god seed, which Natsu's going to face off against. And as the battles continue, it keeps cutting to Alderaan and Natsu talking to each other. And Alderaan is getting more anxious, like, no, another god seed has fallen. And Brandish mentions how she has to enlarge someone to defeat the dragon Alderaan, the one whose back they're on. And points to Gajiel, showing the foreshadowing for perhaps the next episode or the episode after that. So stay tuned for all that. Now we have Gears going up against Jalal, which... He has this ability where he, he messes with, with time itself and inverts things. And a really cool sound effect as he's like twisting his, his arm around it. And Jalal's getting all confused. And as Gears attacks him, he turns into Urza. And then Jalal starts feeling more regret for what he did to Urza years and years ago with the original series. So he's kind of helpless there. Like, come on, Jalal, you got to get over yourself. And then Urza wakes up, remember she was knocked out, and is, is sitting there with Loxus, and Loxus says to Urza, 
I don't know who did this to you or I, Urza. What's going on here? And then Urza says, you know, what's going on after law? And Loxus says, oh, you're worried about your boyfriend, huh? And that, <laughs> that's when Urza makes this face. Jeez, he's not my boyfriend. Don't say that. <laughs> boyfriend, no. <laughs> Look how nervous she's getting. Poor Urza. So we see the return of Altier when Jalal is fighting against Gears. He goes into like this time paradox and he meets Ultir again, who gives him the, the confidence to rise up and overcome his demons and fight again. And it was so great seeing her. So here's a screenshot from the manga, which, oh man, Ultir is so beautiful. I love her. There's a full body shot in the anime, as well as an ass shot, but I can only get so many screenshots for this video here. You get the idea. It's, it's just great to see Ultir again, give some words of wisdom for Jalal. And there's some side boob too, like, oh, what a woman. <laughs> she gives Jalal the confidence to get back on his feet and fight again. And that's exactly what he does. He remembers who exactly he's fighting for, which of course is Urza. And he's able to defeat Gears, which as he gets up again, there's a moment where he, he casts aside Seagrain. We haven't seen Seagrain since, got what, the Tower of Heaven arc? It's been a long time since that. Maybe there were some flashbacks from the Arashi and Sace arc in the original series. But he does, May the seven stars bring judgment upon you! Grand Chariot! And then you see Gear's face like, Oh, I'm screwed. And he defeats him. Which, man, I gotta say, Jalal, he's gotta be one of the strongest characters in the entire series. He's gotta be up there of Guild Arts. They teased the fight against Loxus early on. I think Jalal would beat Loxus, honestly. He, he might not beat Guild Arts, but he's up there. He was a wizard saint, if you remember. So there's Alderaan shitting his pants like, Oh no, another god scene has fallen, it's just me now! And he's ready to throw down with Natsu. And he mentions, you know, Natsu, the brother of Ignea. And it shows Natsu, he's like, Yeah, you know, Ignea and I may have the same dad. But Zerif is my only brother. And it was such a badass slide. Zerif's my only brother. So that's where the episode ends. Next week, looks like we're going we're gonna to get Natsu versus Alderaan. And then perhaps the other thing with Gajil getting enhanced by Brandish using, using her magic to make Gajil giant to fight the actual dragon Alderaan. But I love this episode, man. Lots of great stuff with Grey and Juvia. Really enjoyed it. Another thing I wanted to mention, of course, is... The English voice actor for Celine has been announced, and we have Natalie Van Sistine voicing Celine. Uh, most famous, I guess, for voicing Yor in Spy Family. Looks like she's in My Hero Academia and Honkai Star Rail. So I haven't watched this episode. This is episode 15. So far, I've only watched up to episode 12 of the English dub, and that's because I like to record these episodes right away. If I were to, you know, watch the episode, then get caught up with the English dub, I'd, I'd, I wouldn't forget what happened in episode 17, but I want it fresh in my head, if you know what I mean. So, looking forward to getting caught up soon. I just wanted to highlight this because I was looking forward to hearing the voice actor of Celine. I'm not really familiar with this lady. I'm sure she does a great job voicing Yor. I know people love to spy family, so... Definitely looking forward to hearing her, but let me just read. All under the perfect glow of the moonlight. That's a quote from Celine. I am beyond honored to play the moon dragon god Celine in Fairy Tale 100 Years Quest. I'm rather new to the world of Fairy Tale, but I can't wait to see what's in store. Thank you, Chris George, for the opportunity. He's the director for Fairy Tale 100 Years Quest, who's done a great job, by the way. But, you know, we've already seen this. I'll just show you again. The, the sexy Celine. You gotta love her. That's her uh, concept art, and then that's the promotional artwork for, for the second half of, of uh, the first season. I guess, do we call it season two? No, we're still in season one, the, the second half. But yeah, you know, excellent episode. I loved it, guys. Um, so many great things. I mean, just to reiterate, like, Ultier. See an Ultier again. I'm sure the people who are just watching the anime were shocked by this. See an Ultier again, because at least with Brandish, you can sort of see it coming that she's in the opening but see an Ultier return, and she looks, oh, she looks great, man. I love Ultier. One of my favorites, and her, like, oh, that's another thing I love so much about Fairy Tail, is how you have these characters who start off as villains, and then they get such a great redemption arc. Like, even Jalal is an example of a great redemption arc, but Ultier especially from the Grand Magic games, and then seeing her again in the final season of the original series, helping Wendia and Sheria, which this is her, her outfit. She changed the outfit, um from 
the Grand Magic games to this. That was the one in the final season. So it's, I'm, I'm glad they're consistent with that. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And stay tuned for more videos coming soon. Everybody have a great day. And peace out. 99.